<clears throat> okay. So now I want to uh, switch topics and uh, talk about the manufacturing of these uh, crystalline uh, solar cells. And basically, the I want to take you through how you convert this quartz into these uh, panels. And I'll show a video in between, and then we'll analyze what happened in that video. So let me, you know, let let me uh, uh, first ask you this. So. There are these two cells over here. One is made up of uh, multi-crystalline uh, silicon. The other one is made up of single crystalline silicon. So which one is uh, multi-crystalline, which one is single crystalline? You took my other class, you know it. <laughs> so besides Pranam, who wants to? Yes. One on the right is multi-crystalline. This is multi-crystalline uh, Okay. How many people think the other way? Okay, how many people think this is multi-crystalline? Or uh, you, you think which one is multi -crystalline? The right one? Okay. So these are, if you go around, you know, if you drive around and look at the panel, you'll see a lot of either this one or either this one. So it's good, you know, to clarify this point uh, uh, in the class. So how many people think, uh, okay, so let me pick on somebody who said, uh, so does somebody think this is single crystalline? We have to pick one, otherwise we'll be here all day. Yes. The one on the left is single crystalline. Okay. Why? Yes. Yeah, so I mean that's a very good point that Pablo brought on. So if you look at the shape, this is a square, exact square. And this is the octahedron, so you see these corner cuts uh, from the top. I mean, you see these things cut from the side, right? So now, given what uh, Pablo has, uh, you know, told us, how many people think that this is single crystalline? Okay, Ben, actually, let me ask somebody. What's your name? Yeah. Okay, John, why why do you think the corners are cut? Right. So let me explain it uh, why. So these are essentially all the single crystalline cells, they'll be made from a silicon wafer. And silicon wafer, unless you know a better way to make it, it's always pulled out in the form of a of a circular ingot, right? And then you have to cut out your cell off it. So the the best, you know, the you can do this as a problem. The best efficiency, the best area efficiency, you'll get of cutting a square, a square kind of a structure from this circle is if you form an octahedron, right? So that's what uh, that's why these these things over here they have these uh, cut off corners because they want to maximize the total area of the cell, right? Because you want to place them in a panel, so you want to have them, uh, you know, square, so you can arrange them in a panel. But uh, at the same time, they're being cut off from a circular wafer, and the way to do that is to essentially cut out this octahedron from that uh, circular ingot. So that's why these single crystalline-based cells they look, uh, uh, they look these, uh, they look octahedron in uh, shape. On the other hand, these multi-crystalline cells, basically the way they are made is you uh, you fuse uh, quartz into this uh, into this uh, crucible, and you cut it out and you cut off exactly square wafers from it because the crucible was square to start with. So you get these uh, uh, exactly rectangular uh, looking cells, but since they are uh, multi-crystalline, then they don't have a single crystal throughout the cell. They will have uh, They'll have, uh, I'll show you later, they'll have basically these grains at which you'll have recombination occurring. And that's why the efficiencies of these are lower. So these are FG efficiencies 
the ones which are commercially selling in the market and this is what you'll be using in your project as well because they're cheaper to buy and uh, these have uh, efficiencies of around uh, 15 percent versus these have efficiencies exceeding 60 percent yes Yeah, exactly. So the thing is, you want to mo maximize your module. Uh, so if you take the whole uh, circle, right, then you'll put these circles into uh, into a panel, right. So your panel will have less coverage. So it will be a much bigger panel for the same pieces of. Let's say you have ten. Uh, you started with 20, 20 wafers, and uh, you made twenty cells either using octahedron or you kept the exact circle. So you'll have, you'll get a much bigger panel. You get maybe a uh, forty percent bigger panel. And the thing is, you do you want to live with a forty percent bigger panel or do you want to live with the octahedron? So. so People want to usually maximize the uh, area efficiency on the panel. That's why it's. Uh, yeah, I mean the efficiency you get of this is actually it, it will make a problem set. Uh, uh, we put this in the problem, but it's usually very high. It's uh, you can get up to ninety percent area of what you had in the in the original uh, starting. Uh, Circular wafer. So, yeah. Uh, but if you're doing utility scale, you have really cheap labor, you don't, uh, you'll have to pay more for that bigger panel too. So, yeah. These are efficiencies of the final cell, but this is not the pearl cell, this is more like a PESC kind of design. That is what's more prevalent in it. Yes. So that depends upon what uh, what uh, uh, what wafer you started with. Sometimes people do uh, eight inch, sometimes they do twelve inch. So it's it's roughly again. You are giving me a lot of ideas to put in the next problem sets, but it's around. It would be you know the edge to edge of this would be approximately twelve inch. So the this would be twelve by two root two something like. By 1.4, around maximum around 8 inch. Yeah, this is a single cell. Yeah. yeah, you can cut it off if you want. Like sometimes the reason people cut it off, sometimes people cut it off into four. And the reason is they want to minimize these uh, IR losses which are happening in these fingers. But a lot of times you'll get the whole thing. Yes. The color depends upon the thickness of the nitride. It has nothing to do with uh, the amount, the, the what's below it. That blue color comes because of the silicon nitride. They try to make as big a crystal as possible. So uh, let me bring it. So th the way these uh, single crystals are done, you have these Tchaikovsky towers. So you pull up that ignite of uh, ignite of molten silicon out from a silicon bar, and that's why uh, what uh, uh, who was asking about uh, you asking about these doped uniformity, right? So that's why it's easier to pull out a p-type uh, cell because you get a more uniform doping. If you pull out, pull out a n-type cell, that doping concentration as you pull it out varies across this ingot. And the way you make these, uh, so let me answer here. So the way you make these multi-crystalline cells is you start with uh, a crucible and you put all these quads in it. Then you essentially introduce a seed in it which will initiate that growth. And then you uh, heat it and then slowly cool it. You, know, you heat it above the melting point and slowly cool it, hoping that the crystal propagates from that seed. And then it's basically sawed, and then it's first first sawed into blocks, and then you saw the blocks into uh, into these uh, wafers. So the thickness of these are wafers individually are around 250 to 300 microns. 
you get a lot, you lose a lot of these uh, uh, silicon by just sawing. So for what is nowadays used is called a wire cutter, where you use a very thin wire to cut it. But still, you lose a large amount of silicon while doing that. And uh, you get basically cells. Uh, if you look closely at them uh, at them under a TM microscope, you'll see these uh, grain structures and the uh, Holy grail of all this uh, multi-crystalline technology is to make as big a grain as possible. So they do, they optimize the ramp rate of the temperature, the ramp rate while cooling down, um, the size of the crucible, the, the way you put the seed all to ma maximize this grain size. Yeah, but that causes what is called a light in new degradation. So hold your heart system up, we'll, we'll come back. <clears throat> yeah. No, so this was for the this efficiency difference for was for this PSC design. This um, uh, single crystalline can go up to you know twenty five percent. These ones typically don't go more than seventeen eighteen percent. In terms of cost, what you are reducing is the wafer cost, which is only 30% of your final module cost. So your, uh, in terms of cost, they are lower, but not that lower. OK, so uh, you know, let me show you a video, and then we'll come back and uh, so observe that video and then you know I'll describe what were the steps that happened in that video. Okay. So let me show you a automated uh, solar line.
firing furnace. Like the green one, I'm pushing the beginning. 